Now let's discuss the 300 method. Unfortunately, the next two methods require a little bit of math. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the easier one, which is actually considered the 300 method itself. If you remember correctly, using a print speed of 25 millimeters per second, we actually have 300 big boxes that will print in one minute. Using this number, we can actually figure out exactly what the heart rate is, which is using, using something similar to the countdown method, but actually doing math to find a specific number itself. First of all, what you want to do is you want to have a start point, and you're going to count the number of large boxes that occur between the two QRS complexes okay between the two consecutive R waves or QRS complexes now since we're using big box we have to remember that each little box is going to be 0 0.2 it's just 2, 0 0.2 units so in this case what they did is they did something a little weird they actually counted there are 3.1 boxes well what they actually came up with is that there are three big boxes and then there is one half of a little box well, I really don't use this one half thing, so I actually round up or round down. Since it's greater than three boxes, I'm going to say that there is actually 3.2 boxes between these two QRS complexes. Now, what you want to do here is you can use a calculator or you can do the math yourself, but what you're going to do is you're actually going to look down here at this formula and you're going to take 300 and put that on top of 3.2 which means I'm gonna have 3.2 divided into 300 and the number that you end up up with up here is going to be your actual heart rate in this case they use 3.1 boxes and when they divide it out of course you actually come out with 97 beats per minute but I'm not going to use that I'm going to actually use 3.2 because I want to use more even numbers so as you can see here we have a uh, three large boxes and one small box equates to 3.2 boxes because each small box is 0.2 units once I do the math the actual number I come out with is going to be 93 0.75 beats per minute or you can just round it and say it's about 94 beats per minute now the problem with using this method here is that the only heart rate I'm getting is between this box or this QRS here and this QRS here this QRS's occur at 94 beats per minute if this were an irregular rhythm and this right here had a wider interval or this had a more narrow interval this heart rate here doesn't tell me what the wider interval or the narrow interval is it only tells me what it is between those two QRS complexes for a normal rhythm that's perfectly acceptable for an irregular rhythm you're gonna to have to use a different method let's go ahead and estimate the heart rate here as you can see here fortunately they were actually nice enough to go ahead and estimate that it is 8.4 large squares or large boxes so the way that we actually solve this is we have 300 over 8.4 which is the same as 8.4 divided into 300 well, of course, we can't actually divide 8.4 into 300, so I have to move my decimal point over here. I take my decimal point and I move it over here just like this. I add a zero and I move my decimal point up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my math. I know that 84 goes into 300 times, 300, three times. That gives me 252. Now when I subtract these, I'm going to end up with 48. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my zero. I'm going to go ahead. I know that 84 goes into 400, 480 five times. Five times 84 is actually going to be 420. I subtract 480 and 420, and I end up with 60. I'm going to go ahead and add a zero here because there's a decimal point, and I'm going to bring that down right here to zero.
I will now do my math and figure out that 7 times 84 will actually come out to 588, but that's kind of where I'm going to stop. I don't need to go past that. I do know that this is a very slow heart rate, so the actual number that I come up with for my heart rate is right here going to be 35.7 beats per minute, but we're going to round up because the 7 is above 5, so my heart rate is about 36 beats per minute, specifically my ventricular rate. Now let's go ahead and estimate the heart rate using the 300 method for a rhythm that's a little bit more tachycardic than 36 beats per minute. What you want to do, you want to try to find a QRS complex that actually falls directly on a bold line because it's easier to count. Here's a bold line. This one is like almost halfway between these two boxes, but I'm going to go ahead and say that, it, it, that it's actually one big box and two tenths of a little box. So I'm going to have 300 over 1.2. So I'm going to turn this into an equation. I'm going to actually have 1.2 divided into 300. I know that I can't take two, 0.2, so I'm going to move the decimal over here. I'm going to move the decimal over here at a zero. There's a decimal. Bring my decimal up. 12 goes into 30. I know it goes in two times. That's actually going to be 24. And then you're going to have six left over. I bring down my zero. 12 goes into 60 five times evenly which comes up with 60 and of course I end up with zero. I still have a space here between my decimal point and my five so my actual heart rate in this case is going to be my ventricular rate is going to be approximately 250 beats per minute. Now let's move on to the 1500 method of heart rate calculation. The 1500 heart rate calculation is almost the exact same method as the 300 heart rate calculation. The only difference is I'm now using the number 1500 rather than the number 300. Unfortunately, people start seeing 1500 and then they divide it in 1500s and they start hitting the panic button. Fortunately, you can use a calculator for most of these, so it's not like you have to worry about making any kind of a mathematical error during your arithmetic. In this case, they were nice enough to go ahead and count out the number of small boxes. That's a big difference here. The 300 method, you count big boxes. The 1500 method, you actually count small boxes. So let's go ahead and look at this. You actually have a QRS complex that falls here on a bold line, which is very nice. And then you have 5, 10, 15 little boxes, 16, 17 little boxes. So what's going to happen is you're going to take 1500 and put that over 17 small boxes. And basically what you're going to come out to is a decimal that rounds up to 88 beats per minute. Now like I said, a pitfall with this is that if this is 17 millimeters between them or small squares in between them, this right here from here to here is not actually 17 little boxes. So we're going to say there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little boxes in this spot right here. So while between these two QRS complexes is 88 beats per minute, these two QRS complexes is going to be way faster than 88 beats per minute. Like I said before, in this case, the R to R interval of this particular uh, interval right here is 17 small boxes. If you divide 1500 by 17, you actually come out to 88.23, or of course you round it to a ventricular rate of 88 beats per minute. Now let's go ahead and look at this one here. Using the 1500 method, we actually have only nine small boxes. That's all we have are nine small boxes. So the way this is going to work out is we put 1500 over 9, which is the same as saying 9 divided into 1500. Now I know 9 goes into 15 only once, so that's going to be 9. That's going to leave me 6. I'm going to put a 0 here. I'm going to bring down that 0. 9 times 6 is 54. That's going to leave a 6. That's going to bring down a 0. I see where this is going. So basically I'm going to end up with 166.6 with a line over it, beats per minute. So my ventricular rate
is equivalent to or is approximately 167 beats per minute for this particular rhythm strip. If you were to look at this rhythm strip right here, you would actually see that they, once again, were nice enough to give us an actual uh, number of boxes they counted for, so it actually came out to 50 small squares or small boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here a little ways, and I'm going to put 1,500 divided by 50. Well, if I look at this, I can probably start eliminating stuff right away, so I can lock, knock those two zeros out. 5 divided into 150, oh, this is easy. 5 goes into 15 three times, that's 15. Here's my decimal point right here. That comes out to 0, 0, 5 times 0 is 0. So my heart rate right here, according to this rhythm strip, between the ventricular rate is approximately 30 beats per minute. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and look at the atrial rate. To figure out the atrial weight rate, we can still do the 1500 method. What we have to do, though, is we have to count the small boxes that occur between the P waves themselves. So let's go ahead and try to find a P wave that falls right on a bold line. Unfortunately, we can't really find one, so we're going to have to estimate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate this P wave right here. I'm going to say this P wave falls on that line right here. This P wave actually falls on that line right there. So now we can actually count how many little boxes occur between these two lines. So I'm going to start here. There's 5. There's 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And there's about 18. So if I wanted to actually do the math here to find the atrial rate, what I could do is I would end up with 1,500 over 18. And what I would do is I would convert that and say, okay, I have 18 divided into 1,500. If I look at this, I know that 18 goes into 150 eight times, which comes out to 144. If I multiply 8 times 18, now my answer, of course, is going to be 6. Eight doesn't, 18 doesn't go into 6, but it does actually go into 60. I know that 18 goes into 60 three times, which comes out to 54. I'm going to subtract these. I end up with 6. There's a decimal. There's a decimal. I know I'm going to bring down my zero because I have an extra zero right here. Once again, 18 goes into 60. So I know that my heart rate is going to be 83.3 with a line over it beats per minute. Now, this is specifically my atrial rate. So my atrial rate is actually going to be 83 beats per minute. Notice the offset. The ventricular rate is significantly lower than the atrial rate. This is a particular kind of rhythm that we're actually going to discuss later on in the semester. The important lesson for this particular rhythm is the atrial rate and the ventricular rate can both be determined using the 1500 method. You just have to figure out what your P to P interval is using the little boxes and the R to R interval is using little boxes as well. Now we're going to go ahead and discuss the rate calculator method. The rate calculator method is great when you're looking at a live rhythm strip or a real rhythm strip that you just printed off the cardiac monitor. If you use a rhythm strip that you didn't just print off the cardiac monitor and you made a copy of, you can expand or shrink copies. And it's really difficult to use a copy of a rhythm or a digital picture of a rhythm and actually use the rate calculator method. I personally don't use the rate calculator method because it means that I have to then carry around a little ruler as a rate calculator. I just teach this because it is part of the curriculum and it is a good idea to know. Each rate calculator has its own specific instructions. Now, the way that this particular rate calculator works, first of all, you have to make sure that you're using a printer that has been printing at 25 millimeters per second. If you haven't been using a 25 millimeter per second print speed, then the rate calculator will absolutely not work. In this case, the way that this particular heart rate calculator actually works is that you follow the directions on it which say, in this case, you count the third complex from the arrow will give you your actual rates per minute. So you start from the arrow. You first of all take the arrow and you put it onto a specific QRS somewhere in the rhythm, and then you count over one, two, three 
QRS is. Now, wherever this QRS lands is right about here, which means that you are actually uh, with a heart rate of somewhere between 90 and 85. The actual rate of this particular rhythm is about 88 beats per minute, which falls easily within 90 and 85. Let's go ahead and look at the heart rate calculator here. This is one of the pitfalls for using a heart rate calculator. We went ahead and took the heart rate calculator. We took our arrow and we put it on one. We're going to count over the third complex from this starting right here. So here's number one. Here's number two. Number three actually occurs somewhere over here. We don't know where this actually is. It's a question mark. It's what it's supposed to be. So I know that my ventricular rate is less than 30 beats per minute. If I wanted to know my actual ventricular rate, I would have to have a continuation of this rhythm strip right here, of this uh, EKG printout, to actually see another one if I wanted to use the heart rate calculator. Now, can I use this printout to actually determine what my heart rate actually is? And the answer is, of course I can. I can actually use the 1500 or the 300 method to determine an actual heart rate. So let's go ahead and use the 1500 or the 300 method to determine an actual heart rate. If I were to do this, I would actually go ahead and use this QRS right here that automatically began on a uh, bold line. So I'm going to go ahead and count over. Here's I'm going to use the 1500 method. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 56, and 57. It looks like this one falls right in between, but I'm going to go ahead and just use 57 for my actual number, and I'm going to use the 1500 method, which means in this case, I'm actually going to have to uh, figure out 1500 divided by... 57. I know that 57 actually goes into 150. We're going to say two times because three times would be too high. So that's actually going to come out to 114. I'm going to subtract 150 and 114. My answer is going to be 36. I'm going to bring down a zero right here. 57 goes into 360 six times. Six times 57 is going to be 336. I'm going to subtract those. My answer is going to come out to 24. I'm going to bring down, here's my decimal, here's my decimal, here's my zero. I'm going to bring down another zero right here. 57 goes into 240. Well, let's just go ahead and stop here just for fun. So I know for a fact that my, my ventricular rate using the 1500 method actually comes out to about 26 beats per minute. Now this actually goes along with this particular heart rate right here because I knew it was less than 30 and I actually just got the actual heart rate which is actually 26 beats per minute. I would hope that if you see a heart rate like this or see a rhythm strip like this, you wouldn't actually try to quibble over is it 26 or is it 30. Hopefully, if you see this on scene, you will jump immediately on treating the patient because if I see something this profoundly slow, you immediately want to start treating the patient. Once again, using the heart rate calculator method, I want to go ahead and look at the uh, first beat that we actually put the arrow on is this one right here. This specific heart rate car calculator says that you're supposed to use the third complex. Here's one, here's two, here's three. So I know that somewhere between 190 and 180 is where the actual heart rate is. So I'm going to go ahead and say that my, my ventricular rate is approximately 185 beats per minute.